Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome to lesson number 5 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about how to display or output JavaScript and make sure you watch to the very end because I'll be showing you the best way to output JavaScript, especially when it comes to learning. If you enjoy the content, consider hitting like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Alrighty guys, so welcome back to lesson number 5. So in this lesson then, let's learn how to output JavaScript. First of all, JavaScript is different to HTML and CSS, in that HTML and CSS are primarily visual languages, and this is one of the main reasons why people struggle to comprehend JavaScript, get frustrated, and then move on to something else. What do I mean? Well, when we add a paragraph tag to HTML, so let's go ahead and just say paragraph, let's just say hey there, we immediately see the output of that in the browser window. When we change the styling of this paragraph tag, so let's just say paragraph, color red, again we immediately see that change in the browser window. And so this makes learning these languages a lot easier because you can see the changes and additions as you're making them. The other reason why these languages are easier is because they use language that we're already familiar with. For example, we know what a paragraph is and we all know what the word color means. Now the reason why I'm making this point is because when it comes to JavaScript, that's not always the case. JavaScript uses strange alien-like language such as functions, variables, if statements, loops, objects, classes, inheritance, and so much more. And so it's not always immediately obvious what they mean. There is some learning involved. And when it comes to displaying the JavaScript that we write, once again, this isn't always the most obvious thing. So for example, we could write a whole lot of JavaScript and still not see a single thing in the browser window. And so in this lesson then, I want to share with you the different ways that we can output our JavaScript so that we can actually see the result of what we're doing. So JavaScript can display output in a number of different ways. Let's start with one that you should all be familiar with by now, the alert method. So first let's go ahead and just clean this up, we don't need this anymore. And uh, we can close this, and on here we can remove this. Okay then, so to use the alert method, we simply type out the word alert, and then in parentheses, let's just type out the word hello. And let's save this, and sure enough we get our pop-up box here that says hello. Now notice in here we've actually hard-coded a value, okay, the value of hello, but how do we actually use the alert method to output dynamic information? Well first let's go ahead and just comment this out, and on a new line, let's create a function, and of course not to worry if you don't know what we're doing here, we will cover functions in more detail later on. I'm going to call this function plus, and it's going to take the parameters a and b, okay, and in here then we want to return the sum of a plus b. So how can we use the alert method to output the value of this function? Well, we know that to call the function we need to use the name of the function which is plus and then supply it with two values a and b. Let's go for 10 and 10. Now if you save this, we see nothing in the browser. So now let's use the alert method to alert this in a box. So let's go ahead and write alert, parentheses, and then inside this I'm just going to go ahead and copy, or rather cut, this function call delete that, we don't need that anymore, hit save, and sure enough, we get the sum 20. Now along with the alert method, we also have access to another method that makes use of the dialog box, and that is the prompt method. So let's first of all go ahead and let's just comment out all of this, and down here we're going to say prompt. What this will do is it will display a pop-up box just like before, but this time there's going to be an optional message prompting the user to input some text. So let's see how this all works. So let's go ahead and say what is your name? And then I'm going to provide a second value here by doing comma, space, and then again in double quotes, name with a colon. And let's go ahead and save this. And so this is what the prompt dialog box looks like. As you can see, first we have our question, what is your name? And then we have an input field that has this placeholder text inside there. And so here, let's just get rid of this and say, Amit, or put your name in. Let's press OK. Again, we can use something like the alert box to display the output. But what I'm actually going to do is right click, inspect, let's click on console. And here I'm actually going to log this to the console, so let's go ahead and get rid of this, and paste this in here, let's save. Okay, so we've got what is your name, let's put our name in, and let's press on OK. And now in the console, because we're logging this prompt out to the console, the value of this is Amit. We can also make use of the confirm dialog box. Let's go ahead and comment this out, and down here, let's once again console.log this out. So this time, instead of prompt, we're going to say confirm. And again, we use our parentheses and double quotes here. I'm going to say continue learning JS. And now before we display this, what the confirm method does is it displays a box with our message. So here it would say continue learning JS and then two buttons, cancel and OK. So let's go ahead and save. 
Okay, so we get continue in JS and it says cancel and okay. Now the confirm method returns a Boolean value. Boolean values are either true or false. So confirm methods will always return to us either a true value or a false value. So if we click on cancel, you can see that we've console.logged false because that's the value now of this confirm method because we clicked on cancel. Let's just run this again. Now let's click on okay. And now in our console, we have the word true logged out because this time we selected okay. Now at this stage, you might've realized that this console.log method is actually really handy. It's faster than showing our values using the alert method. And of course it's far less annoying and much easier to see. And as you've probably guessed by now, the console.log method is the best way to output our JavaScript, especially when it comes to learning. Let's see why. Let's first of all, go ahead and comment this out as well. And now let's use the console.log method to log something out. So let's go ahead and say console.log. So let's save this. In the console here, it says, hey there, I'm being logged to the console. Now, the reason why console is a lot better than using something like alert is because the console will actually flag warnings and errors to us. It does this using the warn and error methods respectively. So we can actually just say console.warn. And in here, let's just say, this is a warning. And let's also just say console.error. And let's say this is an error. So let's save this and let's see what we get. Okay, so in the console then here, we get this yellow warning and red error. Now, obviously here we've just hard coded these in just to see what they look like. Let's take a look at an example of an actual error though. So let's go here and say alert, and then I'm just gonna say ABC after it. Of course, alert ABC is not a method. So let's see what happens here. Let's just type out this is an error. So once we save this, let's see what we get. So now then, this is an example of an error. It says unquote reference error, alert ABC is not defined. It tells us the file and the line number, line number 18. Now, what you'll find throughout your journey is that errors are going to be inevitable. Whether we're writing JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, or any other language, sooner or later, you will make an error. And so the console's error method here is going to be really helpful in telling us exactly where this error is found. And of course, we will be covering how to debug JavaScript in a future lesson. Let's just go ahead and comment this out for now. Now, another really cool thing we can do in the console is apply some custom styles to our output. To do this, we need to use the percentage symbol and then the letter C before our statement. So let's see how this works. So I'm gonna say console.log, and this is going to take two values. So the first is gonna be what we want to log out. So let's just copy this actually, we'll log the same thing. And now at the beginning of our sentence here, still inside the double quotes, I'm gonna say percentage sign, and then the letter C, space. And now we can provide this with a second value, and that's going to be our CSS styles. So I'm gonna say comma, space, and then here, let's just go for color lime. Let's say font size, 20 pixels. And we'll also do font weight bold as well. Okay, let's just put these on new lines for readability. And now let's save this and let's see what we get. Okay, so check this out guys. We've now got a console log, but this time with some custom styling applied to it. Just thought I'd share that with you as I thought it was pretty cool. So as you can see then guys, the console is going to be your best friend when it comes to learning JavaScript. And so we will be using the console.log method throughout this series. Before we end this video and we summarize, as mentioned way back in the first video, I want to make this series interactive. The more you follow along, the more you code, the easier this is going to be for you. So throughout this series, I'm going to provide you with tasks. It's important that you complete these tasks to solidify what you're learning. The tasks, of course, will be related to what you just learned in the lesson. So let's go ahead and comment all these out and let's see the tasks that I want you to complete. So let's just comment these out and let's comment this out as well. Okay, so our console is now clear. So I want you then to complete the following tasks. So we've got four altogether. The first is to alert JS is cool. Your second task is to use the prompt method to write out what country are you from with the placeholder country name. And then I want you to log that country name to the console. For task number three, I want you to use the confirm method to bring up a box that says continue learning JS. And once again, I want you to log this to the console. And then finally for task four, I want you to console.log I am learning JS. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and we'll look at the solution when we come back. Okay, so all pretty straightforward then. For the first task, we just need to alert JS is cool. So we can say alert parentheses and then JS is cool. Okay, and there we go. We get the alert box that says JS is cool. Let's go ahead and just comment this out as well. Otherwise it's gonna keep running every time we save. For task two, we wanna prompt out what country are you from? So we're gonna say, and then we wanna say what country are you from? And we wanna include a placeholder text as well that says country name. And we also wanna log this to the console. So let's just say, console.log, grab this and place it in here, get rid of this. So we get the prompt dialog box come up, it says what country are you from, so type in my country, press okay, and then we get it logged out to the console. 
For task number three, you want to use the confirm method. So I'm going to say confirm, continue learning JS. And once again, we want to log this to the console. So let's just go ahead and cut this and place it in here. Let's run this. So we get continue learning JS. Of course, we can click on OK. And so that logs the value to the console. Finally, then let's go ahead and console.log I am learning JS. So again, nice and simple console.log I am learning JS. Save this and we get I'm learning JS in the console. In the next lesson, we're going to be doing a deep dive into JavaScript variables, we'll look at what they are and how they work. So that's it for this lesson, guys. If you found this video useful, don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.